things started happening to me, I didn't believe in the subject at all. I thought it was, you know, yeah, I thought it was for people, you know, crazy or just whatever, you know, and that's that's the mainstream that we go through in social conditioning. We're all made to believe that it's crazy, psychic's not real, it can't be proven, empathy's not real, it can't be proven. Love shouldn't be real because that's not proven either. That's a little too close for comfort, lady. Oh, oh damn. Um... What, you've never seen a talking gargoyle before? Welcome to Illuminati headquarters. I mean, Denver International Airport. There's brain on this side, too. What the hell? There's brain like in a circle. So, I, I, I was just, my whole life, uh, been told, you know, this kind of thing isn't real. So I, I never really looked into it. You know, I didn't look at the facts. I didn't want to be bothered by them. Can somebody tell me what is that there? Because the sun is over here. You know, um, I had a very, very simple life, simple mind um, uh, in, in the middle of, uh, you know, uh, redneck country in, in Arkansas, you know, um, very simple life, you know, raising children. Uh, to answer one question, I got a hold of someone when things started to happen to me. And he, uh, he's been uh, with MUFON for over 40 years. So he knows what he was talking about. And I was lucky to find him. And I, I was suicidal. I was scared. I couldn't believe all this was real. And he talked me through it day after day, spent his times. And he said, Eric, one day when you're when you're ready, when you get off your knees, I want you to help people the way I help people. You know. But uh, it was July of 2013. I had woken up outside my apartment. I have no idea how I got there. And I was looking at a orange sphere. Uh, about 35, 40 feet in diameter. It was rippling, glowing like the sun. Uh, it didn't bob, it didn't weave, and I didn't know what it was. And I could have, literally, I could have thrown a rock and hit it, maybe 70, 80 feet away, you know. And it was just off the ground. Telephone pole 75 feet. This was about 60 feet off the ground. Very close. So as I woke up, I got more and more confused about what I was looking at. Um, it... It was really bright, but it didn't illuminate the street. It didn't illuminate the apartments. Very strange, you know, the more I, I thought about it. And I figured by the time, you know, sunlight came up, it was around four o'clock in the morning. And I figured around uh, sunlight, I'd be able to see that it was an optical illusion. I can laugh at myself and go to work. You know, that's that's what I wanted. And this thing didn't move at all. kind of scared me um ominous feeling at first and uh by sunlight it was gone so i walked out there i looked around and i'm like how did you know did light bounce off of something and you know it just it bothered me it really is cognitive dissonance you know if you see something you don't understand you have to know so it bothered me all day i got home homework with the kids um you know, television, all that stuff. And I went outside for my nightly smoke, 9.30 at night. And I was pacing my one-story apartment, and I was looking in that, that one spot going, my God, you know, was it ball lightning? What was it that I saw? Just running all this stuff through my mind. And all of a sudden, it went like that. It turned on in the same spot very slowly, like that. It started to move very slowly and went completely off and completely back on over and over again as it circled all the way around me. And by the time I got to, by the time it got just over my one story apartment, it was, it was just a few feet away from my face. What is up ladies and gentlemen, this is James LaFerre with The Impossible Channel, welcome back. Guys, today I am going to, well, I'm gonna let you continue watching this wonderful video. Eric's going on Netflix and he's gonna go wide. This is gonna happen right now. It's gonna be a different and a new thing. 
So it's kind of like in the past, they talked about the Americas and people were like, you're crazy, the Americas do not exist. It's kind of the same thing, but it's happening now and it's happening here before it happens on Netflix and on in Hollywood. This is happening on YouTube. This is happening on the Impossible Channel. Now, Eric got to live with Travis Walton from Fire in the Sky. You know the story. Well, anyway, so he got to live with Travis Walton after he had this crazy encounter. The Pentagon got involved. He got to know things before they happened. He got into a lot and he's going to talk about it right now. And he wants you to share this story. Eric is just like you and me, right? So this is like, you got to understand folks, he's being brave. So let's continue. And I want you to leave a like, subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you again. It blinked twice really fast and shot away as fast as a bullet. No sound, no sonic boom, no wishing sound. And so I was shaking, like my knees were shaking, my hands were shaking. This thing was intelligently controlled. The energy it would take to operate this thing is beyond anything that we have or capability. Um, it was just, I could barely move, you know, like a, you, like a goat that gets scared, you know, they stiffen up and they almost fall or they do fall. That's how my body just locked up. So I finally went inside and I thought about it all night. Uh, I could not figure out what it was. My friend Dan, he was from uh, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. Have you heard of that? Spent eight years there in the Air Force and uh, he lived right across from me. And he came out and we were looking for the leak in my car and uh, he noticed something was really bothering me. Everybody did, but you know, I was just saying, I'm a little stressed, but I, I was having anxiety. You know, I was scared. What? It, it just bothered the hell out of me. Uh, he, he handed me a beer, you know, a Bud Light, and he said, this will help calm your nerves. I know it's stressful being a single parent. And I put it on the hood of my car, and I talked to him for a little bit, gave him a good man hug. He went inside to go eat, you know, dinner his wife was cooking. Um, and I, I reached back to, uh, to grab that beer. I was standing on my shoelace. So I went, oh, God, I untied my shoe, you know. So I knelt down and tied my shoe, and I felt a vibration on the top of my head. Very gentle at first, and then as if you know, someone just turned up the volume all the way. Uh, you know, if you're standing in front of a rock and roll speaker at a concert, you can feel the vibration in your chest, uh, maybe your teeth, you know, your face. This was times a million. I went directly to the ground. Um, you could have kicked me like a football, I wouldn't have felt a thing. The vibration was so um, strong, lack of better words. I knew I was throwing up because my throat was open for a long period of time. That's the only reason I knew I was throwing up. And the only thing I could think through my mind was, I'm being killed. My vision was impaired uh, in that instance, so everything was kind of blurry. And all I could think of doing was get as much fluid in me as possible. So I was drinking cranberry juice, water, I was spilling stuff all over myself, you know. And that morning I started to feel a vibration on the top of my head. So I grabbed the counter and I braced for it because I, I thought I was being attacked again. And the moment I would relax, it would go away. Well, this happened about four or five times and I was sitting on the couch. And at this point I'm thinking, I completely lost my mind. None of this is real and I need professional help. I'm a student of psychology, you know, um, but this couldn't possibly be real. So I paid attention to that feeling that I had, and all of a sudden a sound shot through my mind, literally a sound. And I jumped up, I, I walked back and forth, I'm going, this isn't real, my God, this isn't real. I calmed myself down again, and I did it again. And it was like a, almost a feeling inside my mind 
that I could locate and it would just vibrate and create noise. Uh, that really bothered me. Now my daughter graduated high school at 14 years old and she put her ear there and she goes, oh my God, dad, what is that? And I showed her again and again. And the little scientist that she was, she put a bowl of water on my forehead and had me lay down. And when I do it, it would vibrate the water and she would film it. One of these are silly little experiments, but uh, it was validation for me that someone else knew uh, that there was something going on. The next day she came home with the stethoscope um, she asked me to do several different sounds, variations, to show level of control. You know, therefore there's not tinnitus or a heartbeat in my head or, you know, the, the obvious uh, critiques. But this object came back night after night, almost every single night. There were communications, there were um, Black Hawk helicopters that would show up, uh, F-18 Hornets that would chase this object away, it would come right back. and. These things would take a long time to turn around and it'd already be in my yard again, just playing with them, literally playing with them. Um, it scared the people so much that out of all the 20 apartments and the three trailers across the street, everybody started to move. Um, we took off to Maine to put my daughter into a, a bigger college, better college. The first night we were there, uh, we were on the uh, third story deck. An object came up over the trees into the street, scared the hell out of my new neighbors. They were kicking chairs over trying to get back inside because we were on the deck having cigarettes. And uh, went to Vegas. Uh, there were sightings over my home there. Um, come to find out there was a man named uh, Lieutenant Colonel of the United States Pentagon that was uh, stalking me and my family. He didn't send goons to do it. He did it his damn self. My neighbor, Debbie, she was a porter at the Lakeshore condos down the street from where I lived, um, went into this man's room to clean out his, uh, you know, put fresh soap, you know, you get fresh sheets, you know, a porter. And there were pictures of me and my children all over his bed, uh, shopping at Walmart, playing baseball in the park, me going to work, me coming home from work, a ledger where he wrote down everything that we did. Um, he was well aware, you know, and, uh, so I told Debbie, I said, get this man's name, go to the office, get his name, and call me right away. She called me back. She said it was Lieutenant Colonel Wood. So I gave it to my investigator. My investigator was putting this case together the entire time. Evidence, witness statements, um, everything that happened. He was very meticulous. I mean, I couldn't fart without this man knowing about it. And uh, and I'm, you know, I'm glad he did because now there's enough evidence to actually build not a not a, you know, a case that is flimsy. It's a, this is a case that would go in court and, and probably pass before a jury. But he, um, he, he was very helpful. I mean, he saved my life. He was there for my kids. Um, he uh, took this man's name, found out someone that worked for the Pentagon with the same name and cooperated it with, uh, with uh, uh, Debbie about his face, who he looked like and everything. And she pointed his face out. She said, that's the guy. And this guy worked for the Pentagon. He was involved in foreign relations, NORAD. I mean, this guy was top notch. Man, I've learned a lot. I've learned an awful lot. I, I went into uh, ufology, met Travis Walton. I lived with him for about six months. You know, we corroborated quite a bit. I met with a lot of ufology not a good place to go because if you're an experiencer they don't like you <laughs> and I didn't give a shit if they liked me or not you know I was there to tell the truth and uh you know all of them they said there's no program in the Pentagon I said wait for it and it happened out front now the former Pentagon military official who ran the covert government program up until this last November Luis Elizondo Luis thank you so much for your time tonight I mean first tell us what the purpose of the program was and why it was so secretive Oh my gosh. An unidentified flying object. Oh, thing, dude. Spotted by two Navy fighter pilots flying high above the clouds. There's a like thing. It's rotating. These newly released videos from the Department of Defense published. And uh, there's more to come. I had a um, man from the Central Intelligence Agency. He contacted me and uh, some of the top uh, recorded experiencers you know um 
throughout America. You got the Allagash twins, uh, the Hewen twins. So um, Audrey Hewens, Travis Walton, myself, the Allagash twins. Um, let's see. Uh, Christopher Bledsoe Sr. was invited out there, but he never went. Um, we pulled up. He wasn't there yet. So I'm as soon as... As soon as I walk through the door, because I've seen it on, on YouTube, you know, Jack, Jack and Jim Wiener from the Allagash. And people are skeptical. Now, I'm always skeptical unless I see something, you know. I mean, unless I absolutely know, then it's always a question, you know. And as soon as I walked through his front door, I saw his uh, screensaver on his computer. And it was a perfect rendition of this object. The one I saw, you know. And in, immediately I knew. I immediately I knew because it was a computer generated thing that he, he put on his, his screen and that was it. I mean, you couldn't get a, a better picture than that. So I knew immediately that the Allagash twins were telling the truth. They're completely underrated. And, um, the man from the Central Intelligence Agency showed up. He had a uh, manila envelope and he put it down on the kitchen table in front of everybody. And he said, do you guys have any photos? And I said, well, I've got plenty. You know, I had this uh, $20 Walmart from from 2010, you know, I mean, terrible, terrible. You know, you try to take a picture of a moon with it and you'll get a, a speck. Uh, so I, I opened it up and I, I had a picture of a UFO at 20 feet away from my way from my person. And I put it on the table and he looked at it. and He said, where did you get this photo? The Internet? He was angry. And I said, no, I took I took that picture. I said, you can look at the, you know on the uh, phone and, and see the information, the date, the time. He gave me quite a bit of information. He said, Eric, you haven't been spoiled or splendored by all the fame, the book sales and, and you know, all that. He said, I want to tell you some things that might want to hang around with you for a while. And he said, I'm not going to tell you the full truth, but I'm going to give you some hints. And if you find out for yourself, then there you go. And he wanted to tell me um, the years and years and years that they've been studying this. They have never dropped it. They've never let it go. It's very, very highly compartmentalized. Very few people are involved. It's terrible. And it really let me know that we have a lot of growing up to do. Um, but ufology is not going to be that. I was contacted by CNN. I was contacted by um, uh, 60 Minutes and uh, several other smaller uh, news organizations. I did do a, a news briefing in uh, Portland, Maine, because there was a report of a UFO over my house and they wanted to talk to me about it. And I went on the local four different radio stations in Portland, Maine, uh, to talk about why this is a thing. I was surprised they invited me to do that. And, you know, sometimes they actually let you in, but most of the time they don't. But I could not go on these major networks with anxiety, my worldview falling apart. I would have looked like a complete nutcase. <laughs> Because I was a time of fear, I was not well put together like I am today. Um, now, if they call me today, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it because, uh, you know, you want a lie detector test. You want my results from, you know, going under regression. Do you want, I mean, what kind of proof does a person need? I'm going to put this right in my ear. Okay. It's a regular shirt mic, nothing special about it. And we are going to show um, full control of making sounds with my brain, as crazy as it sounds. And I am ready to go. Okay, Eric, you ready? We're going to do bursts of four. Recording 30 seconds.
30 seconds, go ahead and relax. And uh, I'll make, I can make that available. But uh, it's just at a time now where the iron's going to get hot. I was told by the Central Intelligence Agency that 2019 and 2020 are going to be some big moves toward disclosure. And I've been watching it happen. And the number one thing they did was put over $2 billion in stocks over the UFO subject into Hollywood. Just dropped a couple of B, you know, billion. Yeah, the good old Bs uh, to make sure that what they call a weathering will happen. This has to be a very slow weathering, as I've heard them say, into people's understanding. And uh, in doing so, you can slowly pipe it down, control the masses, control the situation. The corporations can have their cut of the pie. Politicians can have a cut of, the, you know, a cut of theirs. But the people are still under the mind control in which we were born into in the first place, for lack of better educational words. Um, because that's what we do. We're in economic slavery. Why is it hard to buy meat? You know, why is it hard to gas up my car? Why is it hard to pay rent? I, you know, there's so many other things in life to focus on. I'd like to look at a few birds, maybe some deer in the yard, you know, uh, have a slice of pizza or two, smile a bit, you know, but uh, this economic slavery is not built for humanity. It's built to control it. I mean, we're surrounding ourselves with everyday household appliances that can connect to the internet, spy on everything that you do, your information. We have computers that, you know, put together psychological profiles of all of our neighbors. I mean, this is, this is a, a digital prison built around people that are happy about this new technology, but the danger in it is, is, has so many consequences. Nobody wants to live yeah, nobody, nobody wants to live in a socialism society where if you fart in your house, it, it goes straight to the Pentagon, you know? It's too evasive. That's, it, well, it's, you know... In my shoes, a lot of times it's embarrassing to talk about, it's embarrassing to say, I know what it sounds like, you know? Um, a lot of people are like, okay, prove it. Well, okay, you know, I'm gonna make sure you don't sleep tonight. I've been fully analyzed. Um, doctors are very upset about it. Scientists are very upset about it. There's no mechanism in the human brain that can generate sound or vibration. Um, it's Your brain has no nerve endings, no mechanism to make sound. I mean, so what they're looking at is impossible, but on a, um, um, a much smaller level, you're looking at positive and negative ions interfering with your outside source at all given time. And, uh, you know, if you can set it off like I do, you can put an EMF meter right here on my forehead and tell me to redline it or orange line it or, you know, do anything like that. I still feel very uncomfortable with, um, um, you know, talking about it without being able to show it. Um, and I feel uncomfortable that I'm different, you know, but I, I always get the worst, you know, um, feedback when it comes to showing those things. The damn producer wanted it uh, for Netflix. And I'm like, guys, I don't even want to talk about this until I land on that plane. When I land and get off the plane, I want your sound guys to be right in my face because I'm going to show you something you've never seen before. That story sparked his obsession and explains the alien looking out from the side of Bigelow Aerospace. It made for the kind of conversation you don't ordinarily have with an accomplished... Foes have come to Earth. There has been and is an existing presence, uh, an ET presence. And I spent millions and millions. I probably spent more as an individual than anybody else in the United States has ever spent on this subject. Sorry that some people will say, did you hear that guy? He sounds like he's crazy. I don't care. That in our space travels, we will encounter other forms of intelligent life. You don't have to go anywhere. You can find it here. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, it's not kindergarten here. <laughs> you know, it's not that simple. 
we're addicted to football, Honey Boo Boo, reality TV, we're, uh, we've got to get the next best computer, next best cell phone, we, we're addicted to ideas that don't even make sense, these are ideas out of greed, and I mean, so on and so forth, we are, as a species, addicted to all the wrong things, and so I think if we started helping ourselves a little bit, uh, that we'd get a little more intervention. But for now, uh, it's, uh, it's who they pick and choose to deal with and, and, and uh, on a strict basis.